A few years ago, when the New York Islanders were seeing some of their best success since the early 80s, what would you say the team was, identity-wise? A uh, metapod. Okay. A, a defensive shell. Jesse. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, a few years later, minus Barry Trotz, what are they now? Uh, basically the same thing. Kind of. It kind of doesn't. It's it's. They're a bit of a Franken team. Well, this is the thing. So they moved off of being that defensive stalwart. And to me, they're risking just becoming another team who happened to crack 90 points. Wow. Right? What? Well, because, okay, so what is the identity? They got rid of Barry Trotz to bring in a coach to help Matt Barzal open up a little bit. They go out and they get Bo Horvat, right? They yep. go out and they get stalwart Pierre Engvall and lock him up forever and ever. Amen. He was pretty good. He was good on that yeah. lineup for sure. For sure. And we will get to him. Sure. But I'm question. My question this year, and I don't think anyone can answer this except for the Islanders themselves. What are the New York Islanders now? What are they trying to be? What are they going to be? I mean, they're still a team. You do not want to play in the playoffs. They're they have to get there though, but they, they have to get there. Like, okay. So this is going to be the third metropolitan video that we upload. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I called them the the Metropolitan Division mm -hmm. uh, because I think there's two teams at the top that kick complete ass. Mm -hmm. I think there's two teams in, at the bottom that suck complete ass. And then you could interchange the entire rest of the division. They might finish third. They might finish sixth. They Does anyone confidently know where the Islanders are going to finish. I had to check my list <laughs> before we started recording. I saw the number and I went, eh, I don't know. So, okay, let me ask you guys this. They had 93 points last year. Mm -hmm. Yep. What are the betting odds on their point total this year? What do you think? 92. If you say 112, I'm going to laugh. 92.5. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're going to the exact same number? Uh, I'll drop it down a little. I'll say 89 and a half. Uh, 91.5. So oh. you guys were both in the range. Split it, yeah. um, so betting odds are saying... They're not that much better. Yeah, they're around the same. That's a that's you're right on the cusp of the playoffs. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're here's there. what their defense. Let's start there because it seems to be their strength. You got Pelic and Pollock, which are a great defense pair. Yeah, it's just a broadcaster's nightmare, though. You have other Aho Sebastian, so other Sebastian Aho, also a broadcaster other Sebastian nightmare. and Noah Dobson. Yeah. You have Alex Romanov, which you know famously was going to be the the next Larry Robinson for the Montreal Canadiens, didn't mm -hmm. happen, mm -hmm. and Scott Mayfield. Um, it's pretty good. pretty good defense. It's core. a really good core. There's I don't see a weak spot. I think Ryan Pollock might be one of my favorite non leaf players. I love him for again irrational, but love him. It's a, want him to be a leaf so bad. I mean that third pair would be a second or first on some teams in this league. Yeah, yeah. no, it's good. Yeah, um, up front, this team has struggled struggled to score for years. Um, and last year was supposed to be the year that changed a little bit. That's why they moved on from Barry Trotz, but it didn't change. They finished 22nd in goals four. Mm. How much does having Horvat and Engvall uh, and his goofy extension, um, how much does that help this team score a little bit more? Because they're not going to be among the, the highest scoring team, uh, score, teams in the league. But you do need Barzal, who's moving to the wing for Horvat. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's the fascinating part of this team. So yeah, what? Talk, let's talk about it. Well, he's an option, right? Yeah, their whole thing is we're gonna try and get you going again, and we're gonna pair you up with uh, with uh, Bo Horvat and and try and return you to a uh, dynamic goal scorer and see if you can do that. Because yeah, that's the thing about the Islanders is if they can put up goals, they'll be so good. Like that's the only <laughs> thing they're missing right now. Like, like you said, the average. Yeah, like you said, they finished twenty second in the league in goals for, and I think the more egregious number is their power play percentage. Because if you look at the teams who finished ahead of them on the power play last year, it includes Montreal, Ooh. Chicago, Ooh. Columbus, oh. San Jose, Arizona, teams that sh wow. are just dog poop. <laughs> and did they finish last? What, what they was it? 30th in the league and on PP. Wow. Who finished? Who so was the worse? Ducks? The only two teams below them, Anaheim, yes, because Anaheim was last in everything. Yeah. And Philly. Wow. Is a wasteland of goal scoring. So Whoa. if, if, and they made the playoffs. 
Wow. They made dude. the playoffs with this roster that can't score goals. So I look at the Highlanders team. I'm saying they got one of the best goaltenders. They have great system defense. Their team can stop anybody. Yep. If they just score a little bit, they'll be back in the playoffs. So like the ghost of Barry Trotz, even though he's still alive. Like yeah. that's, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Bo Horvat as a number one center uh, is nothing new, right? He's a great player. That's what funny. do you think it means for Barzal? Now, it, it, from all reports, his move to the wing has been going really, really well. Mm -hmm. But what do you think that does in terms of taking the pressure off him? Oh, it frees him up to do so much more offensively. And I, I, I think this guy has what it takes to be one of the most dazzling offensive player in the uh, in the entire NHL. It's just he hasn't really been put in a position to do it. I don't know if he's ever going to be an elite finisher, but he's a crazy playmaker. And the and Horvat can finish. Horvat can finish. And the Islanders also have probably one of the most underrated goal scorers in the entire NHL in Brock Nelson. Yes, yes. Man, like no one ever talks about that guy uh, disrespected like Engvall to me sort of matches um, what they want to do. They want to skate with teams. He's not going to grind you down. Kevin but Kurz uh, says that Pierre Engvall at 27 years old will be the Islanders breakout player of the year this year. I mean, I, as a Leaf fan, we kept waiting for it to happen. He has all the tools. He has the size. All the tools. Doesn't use the size, but he's in phenomenal shape. Oh, and, he's and got 24 like abs. Yeah. Um, he... Is 20 goals too much to friggin' ask? For Engvall? Yeah. I think they're expecting it at 3 million bucks a year. Yeah, exactly. But like, you but, also need 20 goals from Barzal, which he hasn't done in like a decade. Or but, I should say, like five years. Engvall is a guy who can play any forward position. He's he's played really well at right wing, left wing. He can play center. I wish the Leafs had played him more at center. And Barzal, I don't know about him on the left, but I know he can do the right, mm -hmm. and I know he can play center. So be on the right. there's, there's a little bit more versatility in their lineup. They're, I guess, just committed to being the Swiss army knife of a team. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be marvelous to watch. Yeah. It's not. And like, but once the playoffs arrive, they're going to be misery. The Horvat's going to be the, the hopefully the finisher on that line. But I want everybody in the entire group to just bump up their goal scoring a little. Mm -hmm. You know, like I get like, like crack into it by committee. Yeah, exactly. Like that's what you need out of the Islanders because you don't have the elite finishers. You need Engvall to finally become a, a little bit of a goal scorer and ask for 20 goals. You need Barzal to have the 60 assists that it, hopefully he, he gets back again plus add on 22 you know well, set about, a career high how about you having a really good decor and Ilya Sorokin who's like a top five goalie in the league like take some risks yeah yeah <laughs> take some well, risks I, it, it does make me wonder too if you know certain teams that are bubble teams finally make a decision to retool if the Islanders don't go out because they're always aggressive they right? should they're, have been on to Foley I yeah I agree with that 100% Jesse you know. it'd be a perfect fit Tarasenko was another one this summer yeah where I thought like that seems to make a lot of sense maybe they didn't have the cap room or whatever or Lou didn't like them or who, who it doesn't really matter at the end of the day I do think you're going to see them at the trade deadline in the mix for somebody who can just purely finish goals because mm -hmm. Lou likes that he loves defensive minded teams and have one guy who's like yeah you don't have to do any of that shit and, <laughs> and you know look at the devil's teams his best devil's teams with Kovalchuk right well, that might, was the guy that might be who Matt Barzal is now well we'll see now uh, we do want to quickly uh, have a minute for two different things first off let's talk about the goalies you did you guys have both mentioned them but Sorok and Varlamov, one of the better pairs, I think, in goaltending in the league. One of the best one of ones. Yeah, yeah. Soroka, I mean, they really do not need Varlamov. No. They don't. But keep him. I mean, <clears throat> if you could trade him, do it. I don't think they can. Maybe maybe Tampa, Tampa wants to trade Stamkos for him. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a, you know, that could be fun. You know, that could be fun. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, I, whenever. Varlama, I mean, if they ever need him, they'll be happy. It's okay. You can clear your throat. Yeah, <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> Sorry, it's that allergy season. There we go. Um, if they ever need him, they'll be happy that they have him. But I think once Varlamov comes off the books and they're able to spend that money elsewhere, the Islanders will be able to take another step. Steve, do you know when that is? Uh, it's a while. It's four years from now. What? I don't think that's uh, anything that's happening but soon. Here's the thing. I thought it was next year. No, he's, Varlamo signed until 2027. It's a Lou Lamorello team. They're signed <laughs> until they're dead. Yeah. And he's 35 right now. They got, you know what? That might be, look for that piece to be the one that changes. I think there's going to be a team with scoring that needs a goalie. Um, the one thing I do want to do a quick shout out to, nobody embodies being an Islander 
uh, more than Matt Martin, Casey Zizekas, and Cal Clutterbuck, who continue to do what most fourth, fourth lines around the league cannot do, which is have an identity. The best fourth line in the league. I don't like there's not another one that has the exact same tenacity as that fourth line. They, they have they the are most impressive. secure jobs in North America. Yeah. <laughs> is, is Islanders fourth line. <laughs> also signed. I almost made Jesse spit out his water. <laughs> but you know it's what? It's true. Every year, and they've been doing this for years, except for Matt Martin's little 18-month vacation in Toronto. They've been doing this every year for yeah. m- almost the better part of a decade. Yeah. Well, and like, again, again, the stupid playoffs. But uh, when you're allowed to just beat the shit out of people, they're um, pretty good. They're pretty good <laughs> at just beating the shit out of people. And like underrated goal scoring touch. Mm. Like, again, you don't, yeah. you shouldn't be relying on your fourth line to score for you, but they can. One of my favorite stories ever, and then we're going to get to your predictions, is Steve uh, playing an entire year in junior in one of the NHL games and then getting drafted. And then uh, his team trading, was it Roberto Luongo? You got drafted to the Panthers. It was uh, Jake Markstrom. Jake Markstrom, who had a great potential, and they traded him for Cal Cutterbuck. Yeah, but it, oh, no. But it's okay. Our and starter was Scott Clemens. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> so you quit. Uh, anyway, every time Cal Clutterbuck's name comes up, I think of that. Now, Jesse, Steve, yeah. uh, let's start with Steve this time. Where do you have the Islanders in the division? Jeez, like, again, I got to make sure I have this right. Uh, Maybe I should have went. Jesse, do you want to take it? Fourth. Fourth. (laughs) I'm going to take them at fourth place as well. Since, Steve, uh, to challenge your most secure job in North America, it actually belongs to Chris Lamorello. Ah, that's true. (laughs) Chris Lamorello, who is the assistant general manager in New York. No, he's Uh, he's not going to have that job for long. Because he'll eventually be GM. Yeah, that's probably Who's going to name him that? This is dad. This is daddy. Uh, I have Nepo them. baby Chris. We I, see you. Listen, nothing wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> I also have them at fourth place on this one. I just, um, I, I, I can't see them. The defense is too good. The goaltenders are too good. Just score a little more. Finish like 15th in scoring. That's all you need. I don't know. Like why, why have season seats to the Islanders? The regular season doesn't matter. Go to the, the Leaf games and cheer like it's a Metallica concert. And then just wait until the playoffs. There you go. 